Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. It is I, the natural Chris Black of the Saturday Night Slamcasters podcast, independent professional wrestler, and everybody's favorite narcissist. And I'm bringing you my continued coverage of the 2021 G1 Climax Tournament. Man, it's been a grueling tournament, and now we have the winner of the B Block. And we know who will be challenging Koto Ibushi in the G1 Finals tomorrow night. I have six matches to cover, but we all know there's only one match that matters in the decision of who's going to be the victor. So without further ado, let's get right to the action. The night started out with a tag match between LIJ members Bushi and Takahashi defeating the Young Lion team of Oiwa and Fujita. This match quite like all the other matches, um, LIJ dominating the Young Lions with chops. Uh, Fujita took most of the punishment in the beginning of the match, but when Oiwa gets into the ring, he changes it a little bit, getting a drop kick on Homoro, and then drop kicking Bushi off the apron. He delivers a gut wrench suplex, and they start getting some offense in. He even puts Homoro in a crab, but Takahashi gets to the ropes. But then he turns it around and gets Oiwa in a crab, wrenches back, and gets the submission victory. Young Lions been looking pretty good, even in defeat, throughout this tournament. Keep in mind, folks, they have only been training since April of this year. Alright, in the next match, we have Yoshihashi defeating Chase Owens. This match was more for pride than anything else, as both men were stuck at four points. Chase was dominant in the early stages of the match, with Yoshihashi building momentum and giving Chase the business. It's a pretty good back and forth match, each showing why they deserve their spot in this year's tournament. Yoshi again with them really hard strikes. Chase touting wins over the US champ Tanahashi, one half of the tag champs in Tai Chi. So if he was to beat Yoshihashi tonight, he would be taking down another champion, that being Yoshihashi and the Never Open Way tag team belts. But in the end, Yoshi hits the Karma and gets the win over Chase Owens. He finishes the tournament at six points. Owens for a first year, four points, not too bad. Not too good either, but not too bad. In the next match, we have Hiroki Goto defeating Tamatanga. Goto did not do so well this year. He walked into this match with only four points. This was a very fast paced match, but again, just like the last one, this was more about pride than anything else. With each match, Goto has become more and more vicious, and he needed that aggression against Tama coming off of the biggest victory of his career against Okada. So you can tell both men are working like they do not want a loss in their last night of the tournament. Tama Tonga is just eating Goto's kicks to the chest and asking for more, getting more and more fired up, but was dropped with another hard kick to the head. So they take the fight to the outside. As the match starts picking up pace, Tamatanga hits a supreme flow and then bathed in the crowd's approval. Again, I wonder, are the Tongans going to turn babyface at some point? The amount of crowd love that they've been getting during this tournament has been amazing. So it's going to be interesting what direction they go in. So I start feeling the desperation from Goto as he's just refusing to take another loss. These two are fighting like madmen. They're just reversing double reversals, Goto gets a nice looking cradle, and then finally gets the three count. So Goto ending the tournament with six points, Tamatanga also with six points. Next match, we had Tai Chi defeating Tanahashi. And man, hats off to Tai Chi. The last three matches of this tournament must have been hell for him. I Man, I feel this man's pain. Dude is a gladiator. Woo. And I can't neglect to say, Miho Abe is just so damn fine. Tai Chi goes right for the kill. He nails Tana with that snapback suplex, and the pants comes right off. <laughs> There's no time for foreplay tonight. He wants to get straight down to business. He goes for the Black Mephisto, but he can't pick Tanahashi up. He hits him with an axe bomber, tries again for the Black Mephisto, but Tanahashi hits him in the ribs which is dirty as hell. Tanahashi kind of goes heel during this match because he's just targeting the ribs. It's actually weird seeing that dynamic. Tai Chi being the face in peril 
while Tanahashi just puts on punishment on an already injured opponent. Tai Chi is fighting back with all he can, but all Tanahashi has to do is give him a shot to the ribs and he's slowed right back down. However, Tai Chi's kicks are still very lethal. Tanahashi puts him up in the tree of woe and is giving him these short little jabs into the ribs. It's very, very heel-like, but Tai Chi just refuses to stay down. Tana gets a clover leaf, and I thought that was it. Tai Chi is grabbing for the ref to keep from tapping, finally gets to the rope, so Tanahashi has to break the hold. There's a doctor at ringside asking Tai Chi if he can continue. Again, these ribs must be screaming at this point. Tai Chi explodes up, hits another snapback suplex, followed by a super kick, but he's very slow to cover and only gets a two count. He gets Tanahashi up for the Black Mephisto, but Tanahashi is able to escape again. Tanahashi hits him with the high fly flow, goes up for a second, but Tai Chi moves, puts him in the Gato Clutch, and gets the pin. Tai Chi finishing the tournament with six points, Tanahashi finishing with eight. And at the end, Doctor is checking on Tai Chi to make sure that he's okay. Hopefully, Tai Chi ribs heal soon and that he's ready for World Tag League. All right, the next match, we have Sonata defeating Evil. At the start of the match, Evil goes to the outside. He rings the bell, declares this match has no point, and starts to leave. Sonata, not having that, runs to the outside, grabs him and throws him into the ring, and then rings the bell, signifying that the match has started. Right away, we get a distraction by Dick Togo as Evil jumps Sonata from behind. We get the chair spot. Why the ref is distracted. Although Evil is out of contention, he still wants to make a statement as Sonata is an old LIJ brother. Sonata has to overcome not just Evil, but Dick Togo as well during this match. <laughs> He's able to put Evil and Dick in the paradise lock and sit them side by side. You know, it's an Evil match, so we get the table spot as well. He locks on an Evil Scorpion on the outside and tries to win by countout. It seems that whenever Sonata starts building momentum during this match and is in control, all Dick Togo has to do is interfere to allow Evil to regain control of the match. We get a really great spot where Evil tries to do the magic killer with the ref. Sonata escapes. Evil throws Sonata's leg at the ref, taking him out. Dick tries to run into the ring and do the magic killer, but Sonata escapes that as well, picks up Evil, puts his legs on Dick, and does the magic killer. <laughs> But when he goes for the pin, Dick pulls the ref out. Dick Togo grabs the chair. It gets passed around a bit. Evil throws the chair at Sonata's face and picks up the victory. My bag, I think at the beginning of this match, I said Sonata defeats Evil. What the hell was I thinking? Evil defeats Sonata. So Evil finishes out this tournament with 14 points. Not enough for the victory, as we all know. Sonata finishes out with 8 points. And in the main event, the one match for it all, we have Kazuchika Okada defeating Jeff Cobb in an amazing match. Jeff Cobb was undefeated up to this point. It took Okada to finally take him down in securing his win of the B block. So at the start of the match, Cobb goes on the attack, looking to end it early. Okada fights out of the Tour of the Islands. Slows the match back down after Okada gets the neck breaker on Cobb. And Cobb is selling the neck a little bit extra, more than usual, like he possibly caught a stinger. So we'll see how that plays out during this match. Cobb is still very confident as he starts to turn things back around in his favor, working over the back of Okada. To the point where he's even showing off in front of Shingo on commentary. Did I mention Shingo was on commentary? So he had a front row seat to see who would be challenging Ibushi for the G1 Finals and would be challenging him at Wrestle Kingdom. The way Jeff Cobb has been dominant throughout this tournament is no different tonight. He has found his target and is exploiting the weekend back of Okada. It actually makes you believe that he's going to win this block undefeated. But don't think Cobb is just walking all over Okada. Okada is fighting back every chance he gets. He gets that drop kick on Cobb off the top rope, attempts to put on the money clip, but the strength of Cobb just keeps Okada at his mercy. But this doesn't stop Okada from delivering a dive over the top rope to disarm Cobb. Okada attempts a rainmaker, 
but is caught the spin cycle, then a power slam, causing more injury to the back. Okada is able to escape a tour, picks up Cobb for the tombstone, but Cobb reverses it, drops him with the tombstone, and in one motion stands right back up and delivers a spinning tombstone, then stands and mocks the Okada pose. Cobb goes to finish him off, but Okada escapes another tour of the islands and hits him with the Rainmaker. He attempts to put on the money clip again when they both get up. When he realizes Jeff is about to power out, he gets him up for the tombstone, hits him with it, and then reapplies the money clip. There's a lot of back and forth reversals and counters as both men are trying to finish the other one off. Cobb counters an attempted Rainmaker and nails him with the headbutt. Cobb climbs to the top rope, attempts a top rope tour of the islands, but Okada counters it with the DDT. When they both up, he hits him with the landslide, followed by the Rainmaker, and one, two, three, Okada ends Jeff Cobb's hopes of winning the B block. Like I said, incredible match between these two. Okada will be facing Ibushi tomorrow night in the G1 Finals. So with that being said, I'm going to have to say, I'm going to have to go for Okada for this match. It only makes sense. Why do I feel that way? Well, let's talk about it. Seeing as how Koto Ibushi already beat Shingo Takaki during the tournament, I think Koto Ibushi is going to be awarded a title match at some point between now and Wrestle Kingdom, where he will not beat Shingo this time. Plus, we get to see the match that was supposed to happen at Wrestle Grand Slam, but Koto Ibushi was out due to medical issues. So I guess I'm giving you a little bit of a prediction. I'm predicting that Okada is going to beat Ibushi, but only time will tell. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take this home before I start putting my predictions out there. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to all of my reviews. And if you haven't, there's still time. You can go all the way back to night one and relive the tournament through my eyes. But while you're doing that, you might as well also hit that subscribe button. My goal is to reach 100 subscribers by the end of October. The only way I'm going to make that goal is if you guys hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you are alerted every time I put up new content. This will not be the end of my New Japan coverage. I cover all major shows as you can look through the archives and see for yourselves. You can follow me on all social media. Links are in the description. That'll take you to my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. And don't forget to show the Saturday Night Slamcasters some love. Links are in the description. That'll take you to our podcast site, YouTube channel, Facebook page, and our Facebook group. When I return next time, I will be covering the G1 Finals. So, until then, come get slammed.